Hey there, I'm your storytelling buddy. My name is Storybot. Oh, hot, hot, hot. It's summertime, eh? Hmm, I wonder what do you guys do during summertime? Let me try to guess. I will show some pictures and you will try to choose which picture is not part of the group. Very well. Let us start. The answer is this picture. The answer is this picture. The answer is this picture. All in all, we have these pictures. These pictures reflect the things that we do during summer. Do you guys do the same? Let me know your answer to those and we will talk about them later on. So moving on, the story that we will tackle right now will bring you to an intriguing summertime that happened in the year 1850. Hmm, I can see it in your eyes, those eyes of curiosity. What are we waiting for? Sit back and relax as I present to you the story titled Summer Solstice. The Muretas were spending St. John Day with the children's grandfather, whose feast day it was. Doña Lupeng awoke, feeling faint with the heat, a sound of screaming in her ears. In the dining room, the three boys already attired in their holiday suits were at breakfast and came crowding around her, talking all at once. Though it was only seven by the o'clock, the house was already a furnace. The windows dilating with the harsh light and the air already burning with the immense, intense fever of noon. How long you have slept, Mama? We thought you were never getting up. Do we leave at once, huh? Are we going now? Hush, hush, I implore you. Now, look, your father has a headache, and so I have. So be quiet this instant, or no one goes to grandfather. And why is it you who are preparing breakfast? Where is Amada? She groaned, and grasping her skirts, hurried across the yard. In the stables, Antoy, the driver, apparently deaf to the screams, was hitching the pair of piebald ponies to the coach. Oh my God! Not the closed coach, Antoy! The open carriage! But the dust, Signora! I know! But better to be dirty than to be boiled alive! And what ails your wife, eh? Have you been beating her again? Oh, no, Signora. I haven't touched her. Then why is she screaming? Is she ill? I do not think so, but how do I know? You can go and see for yourself, Signora. She is up there. When Doña Lupin entered the room, the big, half-naked woman sprawled across the bamboo bed, stopped screaming. Doña Lupin was shocked. What is this, Amada? Why are you still in bed at this hour? 
and in such a posture. Come, get up at once. You should be ashamed. Tell me, Entoy, has she had been to the Tentari? Yes, Senora, last night. But I forbade her to go, and I forbade you to let her go. I could do nothing. Why you beat her at least the pretext? Oh, and why not? But now, I dare not to touch her. It is the day of St. John. The spirit is in her. But, man? It is true, Senora. The spirit is in her. She is the Tadarin. She must do as she pleases. Otherwise, the grain would not grow. The trees would not bear fruits. The river would give no fish and the animals would die. Nako, I did not know your wife was so powerful, Entoy. At such time, she is not my wife. She is the wife of the river. She is the wife of the crocodile. She is the wife of the moon. But how can they still believe such things? And you should have seen that Entoy. You know how the brute treats her. She cannot say a word but he trashes her. But this morning, he stood as meek as a lamb while she screamed and screamed. He seemed actually in awe of her. Do you know, actually afraid of her? Oh, look boys, here comes the Saint John. San Juan, San Juan, San Juan. Here comes the man with their Saint John. Here comes the man with their Saint John. That we, thy servants in chorus, may praise thee, our tongues restore us. Doña Lupeng, together with your Don Paeng, rode the horse-driven carriage downtown where they ran across the parade. Look! Lupin! They all pass now! Do you mean to stand all the way? Oh! Was he in that crowd? Has the heat gone to your head, woman? And did you see our young cousin, Guido? I did not see him. European education does not seem to have spoiled this taste for country pleasures. The poor boy, he will feel hurt. But truly, Paeng, I did not see him. He waved and waved. Up the road, steering a cloud of dust, and gaily bedrenched by the crowds gathered along the wayside, a concourse of young men clad only in saggy trousers were carrying aloft an image of the precursor. Their teeth flashed white in their laughing faces and their hot bodies glowed crimson as they pranced past, shrouded in fiery dust, singing and shouting and waving their arms. The Saint John riding swiftly above the sea of dark heads and glittering in the noon sun. A fine, blondy, heroic Saint John, very male, very arrogant, the lord of summer, indeed the lord of light and heat, erect and godly virile above the prone and female earth while the worshippers danced and the dust thickened and the animals reared and roared and the merciless fires came raining down from the skies the relentlessly upon field and river and town and winding road and upon the joyous throng of young men against whose uproar a couple of seminarians in muddy cassocks vainly intoned the hymn of the noon god but when that afternoon at the grandfather's 
the young Guido presented himself properly attired and brushed and scented. Doña Lupe was so charming and gracious with him that he was enchanted and gazed after her all afternoon with enamored eyes. This was the time when our young men were all going to Europe and bringing back with them not the age of Victoria but the age of Byron. The young Guido knew nothing of Darwin and evolution. He knew everything about Napoleon and the revolution. When Doña Lupin expressed surprise at his presence that morning in the St. John's crowd, he laughed in her face. <laughs> but I adore these old fiestas of ours. They are so romantic. Last night, do you know, we walked all the way through the woods, I and some boys, to see the procession of the Tadarin. And was that romantic too? It was weird. It made my flesh crawl. All those women in such a mystic frenzy. And she, who was the Tadarin last night, she was a figure right out of a flamenco. I fear to this chant you give up, but that woman happens to be our cook. She is beautiful. Our mother beautiful, but she is old and fat. She is beautiful as that old tree you are leaning on is beautiful. Beautiful, romantic, adorable. Are those the only words you learned in Europe? Uh, I also learned to open my eyes over there to see the holiness and the mystery of what is vulgar. And what is so holy and mysterious about, about the Tadarin for instance? I do not know. I can only feel it and it frightens me. Those rituals come to us from the earliest dawn of the world and the dominant figure is not the male but the female. But they are in honor of St. John. What has your St. John to do with them? Those women worship a more ancient Lord. Why do you know that no man may join those rites unless he first put on some article of woman's apparel and... And what did you put on, Guido? How sharp you are. Oh, I made such love to a toothless old hag. There that she pulled off her stocking for me and I pulled it on over my arm like a glove. How your husband would have despised me. I think it is to remind us men that once upon a time, you women were supreme and we men were the slaves. Surely there have always been kings. Oh no, queen came before the king and priestess before the priest and moon before the sun. The moon? Who is the lord of the woman? Why? Because the tides of woman like tides of the sea are tides of the moon. Because the first flood. But what's the matter, Lupe? Oh, have I offended you? Is this how they talk to decent women in Europe? They do not talk to women, they pray to them as men did in the dawn of the world. Oh, you are mad! Mad! Why are you so afraid, Lupe? I? Afraid? And of whom? My dear boy, you still have your mother's milk in your mouth. I only wish you to remember that I am a married woman. I remember that you are a woman, yes, a beautiful woman. And why not? Did you turn into some dreadful monster when you married? Did you stop being a woman? Did you stop being beautiful? Then, why should my eyes not tell you what you are? Just because you are married? This is too much now. No more of your comedy, Guido. And besides, 
Where have those children gone to? I must go after them. Do not go, I implore you. Have pity on me. As she lifted her skirts to walk away, the young man, propping up his elbows, dragged himself forward on the ground and solemnly kissed the tips of her toes. She stared down in sudden horror, transfixed, and he felt her violent shudder. She backed away slowly, still staring, then turned and fled toward the house. On the way home that evening, Don Paeng noticed that his wife was in a mood. They were alone in the carriage. The children were staying overnight at their grandfather's. The heat had not subsided. It was heat without gradations. That knew no twilights and no dawns. That was still there after the sun had set. That would be there already before the sun had risen. Has Yangido been annoying you? So shameful for men to adore women? These young men today, what a disgrace they are. I felt embarrassed as a man to see him following you about with those eyes of a whip dog. And was that all you felt, Pae? Embarrassed as a man? A good husband has constant confidence in the good sense of his wife. He kissed my feet. How can you bear those hot clothes, Lupeng? And why the darkness? Order someone to bring light in here. There is no one. They have all gone to see the dead body. A pack of loafers we are feeding. Listen, Paeng. I want to see it too. The third time, I mean. I have not seen it since I was a little girl. And tonight is the last night. You must be crazy. Only low -y people go there. And I thought you had a headache. But I want to go. My head aches worse in the house. For a favor, Paeng. I told you. No! Go and take those clothes off. But woman, whatever has gotten to you? Very well. If you do not want to come, do not come. But I am going. I will go with Amada. And Tor can take us. You cannot forbid me, Paeng. There is nothing wrong with it. I am not a child. I warn you, Lupe. Do not provoke me. Yes, the heat has touched you in the head, Lupin. And see. I warn you, Lupe. Do not provoke me. Yes, the heat has touched you in the head, Lupin. And sit. I will go with Amada. And Tor can take us. You cannot forbid me, Paeng. There is nothing wrong with it. I am not a child. Come, let us go now. Here they come now. Here comes the woman with the Saint John. Hi! You're crushing my feet! And let go of my shawl! My shawl! Stop pushing, shameless one, or I kick you! Let me pass! Let me pass, Harlots! Looping! 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 Throw the animal out! Break his head! How dare he come in here? A boy, it is a man! Throw him out! Throw him out! Chug chug! Chug chug! 
But what has happened to you, Don Paeng? Nothing. Where's the coach? It's over there, sir. But you are wounded in the face. No. These are only scratches. Go and get the senora. We are going home. The coat of the Tadtarin is celebrated on three days. The feast of St. John and the two preceding days. On the first night, a young girl heads the procession. On the second, a mature woman. And on the third, a very old woman who dies and comes to life again. In these processions, as in those of Pakil and Obando, everyone dances. Around the tiny plaza in front of the Barrio Chapel, quite a stream of carriages was flowing leisurely. The muretas were constantly being hailed from other vehicles. The plaza itself and the sidewalks were filled with chattering, strolling, profusely sweating people. More people were crowded on the balconies and windows of the houses. The moon had not yet risen. The black night smoldered in the windless sky. The lightnings abruptly branching fire seemed the nerves of the tortured air made visible. What are you going to do, Rafael? I am going to give you a whipping! But why? Because you have behaved tonight like a lewd woman. How I behave tonight is what I am. If you call that lewd, then I was always a lewd woman, and the whipping will not change me, though you whip me till I died. I want this madness to die in you. No, you want me to pay for your bruises. How can you say that, Lupe? Because it is true. You have been whipped by the woman, and now you think to avenge yourself by whipping me. Oh, how do I know what to think of you? I was sure I knew you as I knew myself. But now you are distant and strange to me as a female torque in Africa. You could think me a lewd woman. If you can think that of me. Yet, you would dare whip me. Because I love you. Because I respect you. Because either you must say it or you must whip me. Oh. I cannot whip you. Then why not say it? It is true. And you want to say it. You want to say it. I should I want to. And because if you cease to respect me, you would cease to respect yourself? Ah! I did not say that. Then say it. Say it. Why suffer and suffer? And in the end, you would only submit. Is it not enough that you have me helpless? Is it not enough that I feel what you want me to feel? Until you have said to me, there can be no peace between us. Then, come, crawl on the floor and kiss my feet. That I adore you, that I adore you that I worship you, that the air you breathe and the ground you tread is so holy to me, that I am your dog, your slave. I adore you, Lupe. No, oh, these are only scratches. Go and get the senora. We are going home.